just up ahead around the corner is a vast area for Boots. They're a very big pharmaceutical company. They've got chemists in virtually every town in Britain and it's their headquarters here, based in Nottingham. Nottingham is in the East Midlands area of the United Kingdom and is the second largest city within the region. Once you leave the dominating River Trent, you remain on a calm and protected canal throughout the city. Nottingham Castle stands over the canal to the north. The grey kite and L-shaped buildings are the home of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs which are quickly followed by Nottingham train station. The canal then bears right, coming out between two professional league football teams onto the River Trent. I'll follow the river out of the city to Home Pierpont Water Sports Centre. I don't know if you can remember a couple of videos ago, quite a number of videos ago, I went to a wood yard on Lenton Lane in Nottingham. This is the bridge that I'm moored up at. Um, in fact, you can smell the, the wood in the air. It was Brooks Brothers and they sell lots of oak face ply, beach face ply, that sort of thing. And I brought it down the bank here onto the, onto the boat. There's quite a large marina here and it's right next to a retail park including a number of restaurants and a food supermarket. With lots of mooring along this stretch it's an ideal place to stay overnight and explore the city. Nottingham is internationally known to have links with the legend of Robin Hood. Through a number of editions and retellings of the story, many characters have been associated with the heroic outlaw. These include Maid Marian, his band of outlaws the Merry Men, and of course his chief opponent, the Sheriff of Nottingham. The bronze statue of Robin sits below the large dominating walls of Nottingham Castle. The Norman Castle was originally a wooden structure and was built in 1068, on the orders of William the Conqueror. The castle was replaced by stone during the reign of King Henry II, and because of its location near the River Trent, as well as the royal hunting grounds of Tideswell, it served as one of the most important in England, for nobles and royalty alike. Right in the city centre now, at Castle Wharf, just to the side of me is Nottingham Magistrates Court, I know it very well because I've spent many, many an hour stood outside working for BBC News, waiting for the not-so-nice people of society to arrive. The city has a great public transport system, including the largest publicly owned bus network in England, good rail links, as well as a modern tram system. The Lace Market is a historic quarter mile square area of the city. It was the centre of the world's lace industry during the British Empire. These buildings were used as sales rooms and warehouses for storing, displaying and selling the lace. A 
I must say it's really strange seeing Nottingham that I used to work in every day from a canal perspective. It's very, very different. You see a lot of the sides of the buildings in a completely different light. The strangest being the brick BBC building behind Premier Inn. Having worked here for over a decade, I've never seen it before from the water. The canal made a sharp turn here and heads down the side of London Road. At the junction of the canal and the River Trent is Meadow Lane Lock. I wanted to top my water tanks up here, but after talking to two desperately looking boaters, I was politely informed the pressure of the water was more like a trickle, as they'd been filling up for nearly an hour and only had a quarter of a tank filled. The canal spans between two notable football league clubs. Notts County is on one side and is the oldest professional football club in the world. Nottingham Forest is positioned on the bank of the river, which, along with Liverpool, is one of only two clubs in England to have won consecutive European Cups. There are lots of mooring spots along the bank of the River Trent, but be aware of some rather large party boats that go up and down here. On the southern bank is Trent Bridge Cricket Ground. It's a major venue for international test matches and also hosts other important cricketing events such as the 2020 Cup Finals and regular one-day international games. Down there is Colic Marina, and in there is Narrowboat Zero Gravity. That's where Saxon and Emma are busy doing their sail away up. I did contact them, but unfortunately, they're not there today. This is 12-year-old Ethan. His grandparents eagerly approached me at the quick show and explained how Ethan was an avid viewer and they wanted me to write him a note on the back of a show pamphlet. So I did better than that and sent him a journey with John O'Mug and a load of stickers. Ethan has autism and ADHD and has a boat of his own called Mucky Duck. The story doesn't end there. The family has a labradoodle called Buster and his mum's written a children's book called That Dog Has Got a Beard, which is about the experiences of raising Ethan and the fact it's okay to be different. So, hi Ethan, thanks for sending me the copy of the book and Molly says hi to Buster. I've included a link to the book in the description below. If you've not already subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost you anything and by clicking the bell icon, you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.